What can you do to stand out in your next interview as a Scrum Master? Today, I want to share with you seven steps to building a solid case study that separates you from everyone else when you are heading out for a Scrum Master interview. Apart from having a good resume, which is good, apart from knowing the Scrum Guide, or apart from understanding what a PI planning is and also answering questions, one of the major difference that is going to help separate you from everyone else is the value you are bringing into a team. The value you are bringing into a team is not what the interviewer see in your resume. It is your ability to communicate practically and to be able to integrate your experience as you communicate with the interviewer. Which is why I want to take some time today to give you different aspects you want to consider when you are preparing for an interview. For instance, if a question is asked to you, what are some of the challenges that you have come across as a Scrum Master? Now, your ability to answer this question effectively, number one, is going to be determined by how prepared you are, not in as you understand a problem that a team can have, but as in you have a personalized or you have a personalized case that you have already prepared. So let me go ahead and share my screen with you. And we are going to be more visual today. And I'm going to walk you through the different aspects that don't only make your case study outstanding, but help you build confidence in the process as you head out for an interview. One of the key things you want to remember is that your level of confidence, the way of thinking is your number one goal. How prepared you are mentally help you to navigate without major challenges. I was having a conversation with someone yesterday, and one of the things I figured out is that the major aspect that is holding them back it's not even the fact that they are not ready for the job. They've done everything possible that they could. They've invested the time, but then they lack the right way of thinking. Why? Because they are listening to a lot of people who are constantly telling them they cannot do it with what you have. Now, you can do it based on the condition that you are investing in the right direction. So we are going to look at seven aspects. What is a case study? Now, in an interview, if you've been asked the question, uh, tell me about your position as a Scrum Master. You are going to situate that in a case, right? Because we are assuming that you are in a practical environment. Let's say that you just went for vacation in Japan, for instance, and you return back to wherever your base is. Let's say you return back in London and someone asks you, hey, how was your vacation in Japan? Now, you are not going to guess what is in the map. You are going to be able to share with a lot of excitement. This is the excitement that is missing whenever you communicate. I was helping someone to prepare for an interview. And when I say, oh, tell me about your role as a scrum master. And then I noticed that all what they could say was on how they facilitate events, how they help your team remove impediments, how they have been able to transition their team from one point to another. That is very good. But it lacks a lot of substance. In a case where if I have about three people or four or five people 
who are interviewing, then I would be able to pick someone that can tell me a bit about number one, the business environment they've been working in. That's number one. Number two, identify the business value they were delivering. Number three, identify what their team composition was. Number four, identify their team capacity and velocity. Number five, describe team performance. Number six, identify a common team conflict and how they deal with it. And then number seven, so it's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, describe your impact in a team. Now, you can describe all of this in less than two minutes, although we probably will be taking more than two minutes to discuss all of this, but you can handle all of this in less than two minutes if you understand exactly how each and every part of this contribute towards your response. Now, let's go ahead and look at why do you need to consider a business environment? Okay, let's say uh, you work as a Scrum Master with West Fargo, for instance. What business environment are we looking at? Are we looking at where you working with a technological team when you were in the business, when you were working at West Fargo? Now, you can also be working at West Fargo, but you're working in the cultural aspect. Now you can still be working there and you are working more on the monetary transfer and all of that. You can be working there and maybe there was an aspect of West Fargo that was looking forward to improve environment and climate change. So despite, despite the fact that, let's say, West Fargo is a financial company, they are different component with different technology that could be developed by a team of Scrum or by Scrum team. So you need to be able to pick your environment and secondly, go ahead to identify what value, what business value you are delivering. Now, one thing you want to understand about Scrum is that when you work with a team, number one, you don't work with a company. I often hear a lot of people say, oh, I work with a company and I have a company with so many projects. No, you are not hired as a Scrum Master to help the company with so many projects. You are hired. It's a very specialized role. You are hired specifically for one or two projects and you work with a team that want to deliver value. So you are not just brought in, let's say, as a project manager to manage a couple of projects. First, a product is identified that needs to be delivered. A team is compiled or a team is brought together that need to deliver that product. And then you are brought in as a scrum master to facilitate or to work with that team to deliver that value. Now, what is the value that you're delivering? Is it a value to increase revenue or to increase productivity? Is it a value to increase? Is it a, a, a value to increase uh, skills and job satisfaction? For instance, we can build. For, uh, you see, in let me take for instance the health sector. If you zoom back about ten years back, you realize that most of the work or documentation, there's a lot of documentation in the health sector was done manually. You need to write papers, you need to write reports. But then most today you often maybe just uh, get an iPad or your phone and you can be able to key all your report in there. And it saves you a lot of time. Now, this is a, uh, a business value that increase what in employee value, value. In most of the cases as well, before you could do a transaction in a bank, you need to go there. You need to call their customer service. But today, you can do that one or two tap on your phone. All right. So it's very important for you to understand social value, reduce carbon protein, improve health. Right. For instance, now we have digital software that can even help monitor heart rate and other stuff. These are digital solutions that you can build as a Scrum Master. Number three, you want to be able to identify your team composition. And this is where I talk a lot about 
what type of themes are you working on on my next video which is going to be on thursday i'm going to discuss in detail the different team composition so when you say i work with a team of developer it doesn't just end there you need to understand was my team a data science team was my team um a development team composed of front end and back end developer was my team let's say web portal team all right what type of teams were you working in and, and these are some of the details we discuss when we have our masterminds we actually get people into practice we get them into project then we zoom into what are the different composition of people we need to complete this project so it's very important and this is why i always say for people if you want to go faster this year you want to belong to a coaching community i had a conversation with someone yesterday and they say you know what i had a job i have a job i've been working for six months but i feel like i'm missing a lot sometimes i feel so empty and why do they feel so empty because they have all along be on their own now a career is not about a job a career is about engaging yourself in a place where you constantly challenge yourself and it's not for free if you're looking for a free community for those who are safe certified there are a lot of free communities in there but to be very candid with you free communities are not going to help you so if you're definitely interested in joining in of our community you can always check uh uh and reach out with a number that it's on the description i will be able to help you and for those who are interested in our next safe certification it's going to be on the 20th that is the 20th so we're having the next safe certification will be on a weekend friday evening saturday evening sunday evening so that uh we can have a lot of people who have been asking about having a weekend scheduled to join so the type of team composition is very necessary the fourth thing you want to identify is you want to identify team capacity and velocity now how does your team capacity and velocity help you to 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 confront a case study for instance if i say tell me typically how your week as a scrum master or how your spring as a scrum master look like your ability to answer this question is in understanding your team velocity and capacity which is related to your schedule for instance, if I want to effectively talk about team velocity and capacity, I will start by determining the period where we normally plan. And that will help me to have, if I have five team members, I will be able to say, oh, my team normally will normally take about 38 story points during the spring. Now, just by going that extra step, not just to explain capacity and velocity in a vain way but by going an extra mile to say all right i work with a team of five people and you know we normally commit to about a 40 story point in in the in a spring and there was this one spring which i had to work with my team to strike themselves because we were running behind together they were happy to do that and we realized that instead of taking just 38 we took about up to 50 but we understood there was no buffer so they needed to be more disciplined and because of the communication and because of the friendly environment we have created everybody was on top of their goal and i was so surprised that we were able to crush this and that was a point where we actually break through the limit uh, the limit of our uh, uh, velocity and the team saw that oh this was doable and that is how they were able to increase their velocity. Now you realize that you're not just communicating uh, velocity, capacity in a casual way. You have gone some step ahead to kind of bring in an experience that is unique. That is what makes you stand out. But beyond that also, you need to understand how this reflects in practice. When you pull up a Jira bot, when you pull on a Azure bot, how do you look at this in practice? When you look at your Scrum calendar, all of that you need to get into practice number five describe team performance team performance i just brought in a scenario in a in a case where which i just described it's about oh how does your team perform now this is a challenge and this is how you were able to were able to deal with but all of this come by you understanding all of the different components which we are discussing now team performance is how well your team is doing but it's beyond bend down and, and bend up chat no it's about communication it's about how you relate to your team very very important and then number six 
Define a common team conflict you have there with before. This is a very important aspect. Why is it a very important aspect? If you don't think through how you are going to discuss challenges, then you will not discuss them when they come on time. A big mistake a lot of uh, 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 aspiring scrum master make is that they only appear in front of an interview when they have an opportunity. No, you shouldn't do that. You need to be prepared ahead of time. We had one of our team members in their first interview, they were able to get a job. But why were they able to get a job? It's not because they're lucky. This person has been practicing and they have actually uh, um, participated as team leaders, helping other people without even getting a job. And that is why within their first interview, they were able to crush it. So sometimes we always we want to get an interview like, oh, uh, uh, coach, I have an interview next week. Can you help me prepare? Yes, I can help you prepare. But beyond just helping you prepare, you need to have that internal readiness. If not, you're going to be missing out on a lot of this. And the final aspect which we need to, you need to consider is describing an, the impact you have for your team. Now, apart from just saying, hey, this is my name. I work as a Scrum Master. One thing that's going to separate you from many people is being able to say, why working with my team, with J and P, I was able to help them improve communication. I was able to get a lot of people to come on camera. I was able to help my team understand the value of retrospective, which they did not really con consider that this was a major stuff. But when I came in and I started implementing how retrospective could help them improve or how retrospective could help them actually stand out, they saw a need and this was a big game changer. So you realize that we have discussed seven major things that or seven major aspects that could help you ac actually stand out. Now, Based on this understanding, now this can now help you to build an outstanding resume. Why? Because you understand exactly what working as a Scrum Master is. And this is what makes your resume work. Your resume, no matter how beautiful they are, and that's why when a recruiter calls you, they want to listen to you. When you're in an interview, they won't say, tell me about yourself. All right. So that was it for today. I hope you actually learned something. Right. Beside questions and answer, there is a foundation. If you're a person who is only concerned about, I want to answer this question, I want to answer this question, and your foundation is not solid, forget about a job. Even if you get it, trust me, you're going to find it very difficult. Hot people, they had jobs, they lost them because they don't want to invite, invest in the right stuff. So this year, you don't just want to do what you were doing last year. You want to be able to invest in yourself. You want to be able to join a community. You're welcome to join our community. If you want a place where you can learn Scrum and practice and actually turn up. Have a happy week. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. If this actually helped you, share with someone. And I'll see you in the next video.